using a CSS framework can dramatically reduce the time it takes to create a responsive website. UIKit may not be as well known as some of the other frameworks, but it's lightweight, packed with features, and it's really easy to use. I'll use UIKit to turn this free BizLite HTML template into a fully responsive web page. First, download UIKit from the website getuikit.com. Extract the contents of that zip file. You can delete the zip file. You should see three folders, CSS, fonts, and JavaScript. The font files will allow us to add icons to the web page. Inside the CSS folder, there are three styles you can choose from. The default styles are found in uikit.css and uikit.min.css. The first version is the uncompressed file. That's useful if you want to look at the CSS styles, but the minified version is what you should link to so that you're using a smaller file. You can preview these styles on the UI Kit Customizer page. This shows you the colors and sizes for the different elements in UI Kit. This is the default style. From this drop down menu, you can look at the other two styles. It, there is a gradient. You see the gradient styles on the buttons here. And the third style is called Almost Flat. This style is in between the default style and the gradient, and this is the style that I'll be using for this course. If you continue using UIKit, you can use the customizer to modify the CSS to suit the project that you're working on. You just edit the different properties here in the left column, and then you can minify the CSS and save the CSS file. I'll also create an app.css file that I'll use to add custom styles for the web page. Then I'll need to add links to both my style sheets in the HTML file. I'm linking to the almost flat minified version of the UIKit CSS file. It's important to link to your own CSS file after the UIKit file. That way any styles that you add will override the styles from the UIKit. The UIKit CSS files listed here provide styles for all the core elements in the framework. If you use some of the additional components, the styles for those are found in this components folder. This modular approach helps to keep the size of UIKit small, which improves your page load speed. For example, here are the styles for the accordion component that would need to be added if you use an accordion on your site. Note that there are specific styles for these components to match the basic, almost flat, and the gradient themes. And also you have the full CSS and the minified versions as well. That's the CSS folder. I will also add an images folder for images that we use on the site. In the JavaScript folder, there are minified and regular versions of the UIKit JavaScript files. jQuery is required in order to use UIKit, and it doesn't come with the download. You can download it from the jQuery.com website and link to a local copy, or you can link to a web-hosted version. I'll go ahead and download this. I'll download the compressed version, and I'm just going to save that in the JavaScript folder. 
and I'll just name it jQuery.js. I usually add the JavaScript at the bottom of the page just before the closing body tag. jQuery needs to be loaded before the UI kit JavaScript. If you'd prefer, you could link to a web hosted version of jQuery like this. Remember to include the meta viewport tag. It's required for a responsive page. It gives the browser instructions on how to control the page's dimensions and scaling. The basic layout of a UI kit page consists of a container, rows, and columns. All the UI kit classes begin with a prefix of UK and a hyphen. In the app.css file, I've defined a container to be 1270 pixels wide, so that after the margins, I have a full 1200 pixels for content. The UK container center class does just what it sounds like. It centers the container in the browser. The UK grid is the equivalent of a row in other frameworks. And the UK width class allows you to set up the columns within a row and specify their width. This class creates a column that spans the full width of a row. This is the basic outline for any UI kit page. Next, I would start laying out the design in terms of rows and columns.